it is time for the trial. The final trial of case two of Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Dual Destinies. Let's do it. All rise for the Honorable Judge Marshall Stevens. Court is back in session for the trial of Damien Tenma. This guy is so screwed, you know. Apollo Justice, defense team leader is ready, Your Honor. Man, you're not pulling any punches. You're in. Like, I'm gonna remind everybody who I am. Athena Sykes, assistant defender is ready, too, Your Honor. Uh, Jess, we pray. Jess. Now we pray. Yes. As chipper as ever, I see. And in French, no less. And the prosecution. Damn it. I'm back in these chains. Very well then. By the way, I asked Detective Fulbright to provide sturdier shackles today. <laughs> there will be no more of your funny business this time. His silence makes me uncomfortable. Now your opening statement, if you would. I believe it's standard procedure for the prosecution to handle it. Yeah, so, um, I have like four days to record two and a half weeks worth of videos here. So these might be a little shorter than usual, hopefully not too bad, but like, try to keep them over 20 minutes at least. But yeah, so sorry about that if that happens. I might record like some Super Mario World randomizer or something with I don't know. The judge is really bringing it today. Yeah. He probably realized how Black Will played him. That was one mean game if Simon says. Yeah, his honor has to fight to defend his honor today. <laughs> Your baldness. Here we go. It's just beginning. It's plain to see that you've always dreamed of delivering an epic opening statement. I have? Hmm. I don't know if I'd say that. Why, of course you have. I saw it in your eyes the last time you gave the opening statement. That was the look of one who yearns deeply for the thrill of an epic opening statement. For decades now, you have been watching opening statements from your bench. They were the crown jewels of the court. The one thing you could not possess. The crown jewels of the court? Now at long last, you get to be as cool as family jewels. He is within your grasp. How could you possibly refuse? Are you playing? Oh, so you don't mind if I do it then? This <laughs> is... I'll make a special exception. Just this once. Here we go again. <laughs> yep, more of Black Whale's mind games. Oh man, he's so excited though. Well, in that case, I might just go ahead and make the opening statement myself. Do it, Judge. Show him how it's done. <laughs> In yesterday's session, we learned the shocking truth that... Yeah, I shouldn't have been so surprised that like, everybody was just now figuring that out. I mean, it was obvious to the audience because of how the game is portrayed, but yeah. So the victim, Alderman Rex QB, was the Amazing Ninetales. We also learned that... The Amazing Ninetales was a key figure in the yokai craze and anti-merger protests. It was further revealed that upon learning Rex QB's secret identity, Mayor Damien Tenma murdered him. Well, that's not one-sided at all, is it? The fact that the crime took place in a tightly locked room was also brought to light, and the only people in that tightly locked room were the defendant and victim. The defense proposed the existence of a hypothetical third party, but further investigation revealed no proof of a third party who had escaped the room. Ergo... We must conclude that the evidence against the defendant is, well, conclusive. That's exactly what he wanted. Did I say something wrong? That was quite astonishing. You've truly outdone yourself this time. Oh, <laughs> one more thing to post about to my grandchild. <laughs> well, this is not an unexpected turn of events. Surely. Now then, it seems the prosecution has called a new witness to testify. The inexplicable yokai evidence left at the scene of the crime. Well, does that not demand some sort of explanation? The feathers and tracks? Weren't those left by the mayor while he was possessed? That was but an act to protect his daughter. Oh, uh, yes, of course. I had suspected as much. <laughs> sure you did. Would he actually believe the mayor's award-winning performance? <laughs> his daughter was the only one who planted the yokai evidence. Ergo, the true identity of the yokai in the manor was the mayor's- the man is made, Jinxie Tenma. Uh-oh. Going for it. 
the prosecution is engaging in mere conjecture. <laughs> would you care for some witness testimony, then? Yes, I would. <laughs> yeah, some people also pointed out his little bird, like, looks shocked a little bit when he slams his hand down. It's funny. For I'm ready to prove that the little scamp is the one behind the Tenmataro Fox. Witness testimony. I bet he means Filt and that creep LaBelle. Frickin' Terry Silver and John Barnes. Very well, then. Bailiff, would you bring in the first witness? Oh, man. Here we go. <laughs> Mr. Filt, you made quite the hasty exit yesterday. See that it doesn't happen again today. <laughs> Been known for my hasty retreat since I was a kid. Bit of a trademark of mine. Indeed, you managed to give a total of five bailiffs the slip. Like those amateurs could ever nab me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Perhaps we should shackle you by the neck. That would keep you in place. Yep, no please, I'm liable to rip my own head off if I start running. <laughs> now that I'd love to see. Your statement, now! Before none of this tomfoolery. Mr. Blackhead, sir, jeez. He may beat a hasty retreat, but there's no escaping Prosecutor Black Will. Black Bill. Yeah, Black Bill doesn't strike me as a give up easy type. Now then, Mr. Filt, your testimony, please. Specifically, the true nature of the yokai you saw in the manor shortly after the crime. Alright, hope you practiced your lines, buddy. All 100 times. Tenmataro is really that little maid gal, ain't no doubt about it. I mean, the Tenmataro I saw was just a little thing about her size. But the little runt had a big old staff. I seen it when she came into the foyer. Bet she stole it from the Forbidden Chamber after some way on the crime scene. She was gonna use it to wow me on account of my fierce reputation, I just know it. Okay, I th <sighs> Wow, if that's as easy as I think it is. That's because it was Miss Jinxy Tenma all along. You betcha. Besides, all the rest of the manor were way taller than her. Feigning height is but an easy thing. All you got to do is wear high heels, you know. Like Freddie Mercury. But a big axe like... No, 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 no. A big ox like the defendant could never pass for short. What if the Tenmataro impersonator was walking on their knees? <laughs> like those people in the video to please by you 2 Nobody's seen that video. There were no knee walking, I've seen it myself. Hmm, then perhaps that yokai really was Miss Tenma after all. Well, it's not the height that I'm concerned so much about. All monsters are not but tricks, either of the mind or the cheap pilot variety. So you're saying she you created an illusion, like one of those magical eye things? <laughs> Precisely, human senses are easily deceived. Take the fellow in the cell next to me. Each night he cries and screams about some ghost he thinks he sees. But in truth, it was simply the janitor. Oh. Oh, Prosecutor Blackwell just gave up the ghost? Literally. <laughs> I made another funny! Ha 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 ha! The janitor's deathly complexion and all-white attire are no doubt partially to blame. That and the fact that he constantly mutters about taking vengeance for this or that. Mm. That actually sounds like a real ghost to me. Hmm. More on that later. Uh, the defense may now cross-examine the witness. Okay, well, I need to look at the court record first. Man, he looks so scary down there. Alright, Tenmataro is really that little maid gal, ain't no doubt about it. Oh, I'm gonna press the right arrow here. Tenmataro saw just a little thing about her size, but the little runt had a big old staff I seen when she came to the foyer. Bet that she stole it from the Virgin Chamber after stumbling on the crime scene. The problem here is that, like, how'd you know that it came from the Forbidden Chamber, right? Because. Do we have that in here? We have the staff, don't we? That's the key. Uh, maybe we don't. Oh no. I don't really see the staff in here. See the key. The key that the mayor took from the house as well. It's only one of its kind. There is only one of its kind. So how would she have gotten in there then, right? Because he swallowed it right after it happened. There we go. It's sort of a roundabout way of getting there, but so it would seem the Tenmataro was in fact not this innocent little girl. You know why? Well, I'll tell you. How do you figure that? You claim the Tenmataro you saw had one of those stab staves. Uh, it could be stabs or staves, I guess I don't really know, from the Forbidden Chamber. 
But it wouldn't have been impossible for Miss Tenma to get a hold of one. It would have actually, not wouldn't. Curious. Glad I glad Apollo didn't misread that like I did. The mayor swallowed this key after the murder. He wanted to keep the killer out of the Forbidden Chamber. What's this? This key was deep in the mayor's stomach punch when Miss Tenma discovered the crime scene. So you see, it would have been impossible for her to get into the Forbidden Chamber. In short, the Tenma Taro scene holding that staff could not have been Jinxie Tenma. Mmm. Take it. Still pointing. But, but, uh, then who does the defense believe was impersonating Ten Mataro? Our Ten Mataro impersonator is none other than Mayor Tenma's aide. Oh, shoot. You were seriously going for it. Such accusations beg evidence. Aside from his ghastly appearance, can you prove he is the Yokai we seek? Wow, you didn't even give me a chance to say- well, I mean, I said aid, but... Oh, okay. But he was ready to jump on that right away. Pretty well, let's see where the defense is going with this. Mr. Justice, please show us proof as to the true identity of the ten- Oh, that's easy. Because we found it in there. Wait a minute, which one? It was this one. We found this hand cream in the Forbidden Chamber. And we know that whoever was Ten Mataro took one of the stabs out of there. In short, now now I'm gonna say stabs, I don't know. There was like a little bit of a discussion in the comments on the last video, so I don't really know. I mean, I think whatever. I believe whoever this hand cream belongs to is the yokai impersonator we're looking for. And it's not gonna be too hard to narrow that down. How do you propose to identify the hand cream's owner? Identity? Is that what that said? <laughs> I'm glad you asked, Your Honor. The defense requests a fingerprint analysis on this piece of evidence. It might tell us who it belongs to. Interesting. So you expect to find the yokai's prints there? <laughs> Very well. I hereby call a short recess while we wait. Wow, wow, really? Already? No need for that, your baldness. We had the prints of everyone at the manor that day. Whoop. Oh yeah, you call Prosecutor Blackwill? Hi there. Could anyone be more whipped? <laughs> Fulbright analysis the for, un, uh, analyze this for prints. You have three minutes. Your wish is my command. Very well then. I guess we'll just wait right here. Okay. This is boring. Oh. It would seem the fingerprint analysis is complete. Well, the fact that they're giving it to him... Um, what in the world? What if they're not? This... This is absurd! Um... Prosecutor Blackwell? I'm not going to like this, am I? Uh? Don't tell me. They're Tenma Taro's pr Oh my god, dude! <laughs> really now? Fingerprint analysis has revealed that the prints belong to... What? What? Objection! Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. I was thinking it was gonna be Jinxies and they were gonna say, oh, he, like, did the th hypnosis thing or whatever, and had her pick up the tube to put it in this. I don't know. Then Mr. LaBelle wasn't the one who entered the Forbidden Chamber? Objection. But hang on a second, though. Why, you tricksy little tanuki. Explain yourself now, and the fact that he's so mad about it? It's obviously not what he expected, either. Sure, them prints are mine. I mean, I did pilfer that hand cream from Mr. LaBelle, after all. Yeah, what didn't he pilfer? So you're the one who entered the Forbidden Chamber, then. So what if I did? Got a problem with it? Yeah, I... <laughs> oh, jeez. You fool of a tanuki. Yeah, wow, what... Oh, jeez, man. Order, order! Knock it off! That's... Sorry, I keep... That was two times in one case. I went over my quota. Mr. Justice, care to explain what this could mean? Excellent question. Well, the fact that Mr. Filch was in the Forbidden Chamber... Wait a second. Does this mean that the Ten Mataro holding that staff was... 
Pretty it's filled. Was it? Wait, did he just admit it? Oh my god, he still thinks he Oh my man. I'm dead. <laughs> this This poor judge. I don't understand. Does this mean Mr. Filch is the real killer? Maybe he was like a red herring, you know, that the witness will explain himself this instant. Like, more than likely, the Joker, like, hired him to do that or something. I'm begging your pardon, Your Honorship, but I was just doing what the Alderman told me. The Alderman? He wanted me to be Ten Mataro in the village exorcism ritual. Oh, you mean that event at Nine Tails Vale Festival? Yeah, that thing. So that was you inside the Ten Mataro costume? Somehow I find that hard to believe. Yup. And after the event, I went to watch that pro wrestling program. But it bored me to tears on account of the wrestlers being complete jobbers. <laughs> so he didn't actually watch the entire wrestling match. That's when I looked at the Ten Mataro costume and got a great idea. Nobody can tell it's me while I'm wearing it. And because of them superstitions, no matter what I do, the villagers won't say a word. In other words, you use the superstitions to effectively render yourself invisible. Why'd you want to enter the Forbidden Chamber in the first place? Because of the treasure there! I thought that was my big chance to sneak on and nab it. Treasure? Oh yeah, we know about that though. Since only that it's the greatest get rich quick chance in the universe. Yeah. But we were under the impression it was stolen like a long time ago or something. Oh. It was stolen a long time ago, he didn't know that. <laughs> nope. Yeah, I stick this watch up my ass for two years. Wait, how exactly did you get into the Forbidden Chamber? There was a meeting in the Fox Chamber that day. Plus the Mayor swallowed the only key that could open the Forbidden Chamber's door. He probably went in before all that happened. I don't know. You couldn't have possibly gotten in. I could through the air vent in the foyer. Oh, dear me. The vents left in the alderman's picture. I went on in and made a nice little hole. Use that to get into the air duct that leads to the forbidden chamber, I did. You what? But how's that even possible? <laughs> Wait a sec. How your fat ass gonna fit through that tiny little hole, man? <laughs> Remember that air vent in the forbidden chamber? Yeah, I do. Has Mr. Fields found a way to get into that air duct? And that's how he got from the foyer vent to the forbidden chamber vent? Huh, that's weird. It's weird that they're just springing this on us now. So Ten Mataro was nothing more than a cat burglar, or rather a tanuki burglar. And we're back to being without anyone to charge for the Alderman's murder. Looks like our so-called yokai is nothing more than one big troublemaker. Tell me, Mr. Filch, what did you do after fleeing to the foyer? I got out of that costume right quick. It would just cause trouble at that point. And where's that costume now? I burned it. Heck if I know, and it ain't my fault if you never find it. Police searched every nook and cranny. No yokai costume was left in that manor. What if it was tossed outside the manor? Nope. Oh no! Okay, they said it was at the top of a cliff, right? Did he throw it out the window? Well, they said there was a cliff outside of the house, but... I don't really know if they mean a cliff going down or a cliff going up. So I would assume a cliff going down, though. Okay, here's what I think. Do it, Apollo. What do you think? Mr. Fields, did you get rid of the costume here? Um... Oh, that's right. Did you toss it out the window? Because that would certainly explain why it didn't turn up inside the manor. You think I tossed it out the window? That costume cost me a pretty penny. So why would I go do something like that? I can think of a few reasons. Any bright ideas, Apollo? <laughs> well, assuming the costume really was tossed out from the window, then the next question would be, what happened to it after that? It hang glided! And if I'm right, I might have just the thing to prove what happened to the costume. Phineas Filch, I have just the evidence for you. You do? 
This evidence proves you got rid of your Tenotaur costume through the window. Uh-oh. Do they really want me to... I'm gonna try it. Well, let's... Because they kind of just cut straight to it, like, oh my god, gee, I wonder what I have to present. And just how does I prove Mr. Filch threw his costume out the window? It's quite simple. That's not Ten Mataro in the photo. It's the costume Mr. Filch threw out. Oh, that's crazy talk. You ain't serious, are you? Actually, I am. There's a steep cliff right outside the foyer window, meaning the manor is pretty high up. Okay, so it's a cliff that goes down. But duh, I, I, that's kind of how I pictured it anyway. The costume flew through the air after it was tossed out. That's when the photo was taken. In other words, the photo of Ten Mataro really, really was a flight of fancy. Shitty pipe dreams is what it was. Hmm. Still pointing. Oh my, so there really never was a yokai. Oh, I can't keep any of them cats bagged. Can I still file a claim for the lost costume? Yeah, from your cell. This more than proves the defense's position. Jinxie Tenma had nothing to do with staging the yokai siding. Could have raised any objections, Prosecutor Blackwood. He's kind of staying out of this. Huh. I'll deal with that Trixie Tanuki after I've dealt with this case. Oh, man. Jeez. We did it! Good going! Now all we have to do is make Florent LaBelle take the stand. Not so fast. Not so fast! Sheathing the sword a bit early, are we not? Huh? Nothing's been proven beyond a doubt. Take this tricksy little Tanuki, for instance. How do you suppose he was able to exit the Forbidden Chamber? Uh, probably the same way he got in? Well, there was no way to get up there. Well, they pointed that out. And what of the feathers and tracks at the scene of the crime? They would suggest that the Tanuki exited through the chamber door, not the air vent. But the Forbidden Chamber doesn't open from the inside. So what you're saying makes no sense. Right? Well... Hmm. Someone on the outside opened the door for you. Isn't that right? Actually, that would make a lot of sense. Mr. Blackjack! The door suddenly sprung right open. And you probably had to hide, didn't you? Sprung right open? Who was on the other side? Didn't get a good look on account of the sudden glare. Oh man. Like how the reflection from my head blinds fellow moviegoers emerging from the dark. <laughs> you go to the movies? You're cooler than I thought. That's when I snatched that staff and made my daring escape. And then that little maid gal spotted me as I hightailed it down the hall. That means the Forbidden Chamber wasn't open until after the crime was discovered. But wait. Oh boy, we still don't know who we still don't know who opened it. Maybe there really was a third person in the fox chamber, Objection. and a fourth person, and a fifth. <laughs> he just slightly turned his head to the side. Well, you little tanuki, when the forbidden chamber opened, did you see the accused passed out there? Nope, only one there was of the alderman. Uh, only one there was the alderman, and he was dead as a doornail. If the accused wasn't there, what do you suppose he was up to? Uh-oh. I don't like where this is going. Hmm. Oh, don't tell me. I'm gonna tell you whether you say not to or not. Plainly, the only one who could have opened the forbidden chamber was the accused Damien Tenma. Yep. 